Welcome to the fifth part of uh, my series MVVM uh, on WPF um, today. Uh, first of all, I want to just wrap things a little bit up for those guys who uh, haven't seen the other parts. Uh, and then I want to talk about binding of lists of something um, in the UI and what uh, you should do and what you shouldn't do. And uh, to start off with things, as I told you, I just want to uh, show where we stand. So I just start the current version. And as you can see, we have a little, a lot of stuff here. We um, currently show mighty threading and um, uh, uh, dispatching of things here with the progress bar. We uh, show error um, handling with iData error info. Um, we have uh, an how do I open a child window thing here uh, in MVVM and um, from that point on we want to go further. So um, today I want to talk about how to bind lists. So uh, to start uh, this thing I want to uh, go into my main view model and just start a little bit you know uh, naive if you want to. So. Let's start off by defining something which is a list simply of person model. And let's call this persons. So this is a, just a generic list of persons. And I just prepared um, a little uh, bit of code. Um, so I just want to paste it in so that we in the runtime we just generate here a list of persons. So a person list is a new list of person model. We add 10 persons and then we say persons equals to this list. So that's the point. To see something now in the UI, we have to bind something there against. And I just prepared it a little bit because here is this group box. And we now can go here and take, for instance, a data grid. And uh, we tell him that its item source is comes from a binding against persons. So let's first of all try this uh, out. I just go here and start this thing. And as you can see here, there are a lot of uh, binding expression errors, let's uh, ignore them. As you can see here, it works. So I can go there, I can even change things, everything is okay. So um, in many scenarios, you see people doing this, just binding a data grid or a list box or something like that, directly to something which is a list of. Um, and that's not a good idea. Why? In the first step, it is not a good idea because when I just say, hey, let's go and um, bring in a new command. So let's say we have a new relay command. Add person command. Get and no set. And now just go to the constructor and say, add new person command equals new relay command. And let's say persons dot add new person model. That's the command. It simply adds one person to the list of persons. So now when I go into my main window, I could bind something um, against this command. I just prepared this too. We have this menu bar at the top and I just add this line. So it says, hey, add a new command, bind it to the new um, add person command and um, just label it with add person. So what happens when I just execute this? I just go to add persons and we see nothing happens here. That is because not because of nothing is added to the list, it is added in fact. So this line is executed. The problem is that a list of person model doesn't propagate this event, hey, I got a new item up to the um, UI because it is just a list. 
So what we could do in the next step, we could uh, take a little um, something which is a little bit more um, intelligent and the next thing is an observable collection. So what is an observable collection? Let's go there. Observable collection of T, it's like a list of T, is first of all a collection which is an enumerable and all this and it implements two interfaces, I notify collection changed and I notify property changed, which we already had in other parts with this one. This one um, brings in a new event, which is called collection changed. So whenever um, uh, an item is added or um, removed, this collection changed uh, is triggered. By the way, just a side mark. Here this summary from Microsoft says that this event is um, uh, called when an item inside of this collection changed. So if the item which we put there, the T, implements I notify property changed, which our item does because it's a person model. Let's go there. We have this person model. This person model inherits from uh, base model and base model is an I notify property changed as you might remember. So the idea here is as it's stated out that this collection changed event should be uh, risen whenever an item is added, an item is removed or if the item is an I notify property changed if it's uh, content changed. Um, so I read it this way but it's not implemented this way. Uh, what they mean is when you replace the item with another item, then the collection changed is called. So that will be a problem later on and we will fix it. So now for the moment, let's see what happens when we have an observable collection instead of a list. And we bind this simply uh, to, oh, we have to uh, do something here because it's a person's, it's uh, not a list. So what we do here is we say new observable collection um, taking the list. So that's why I made it so complicated in the first step. So just saying here, generate us a new observable collection by using this collection if you want to. So now try again, you should build and run. So in the first step, everything is uh, the same. And now we can go to add person. And as you can see, now the grid or the UI recognizes, hey, there happened something. This is because WPF automatically uh, sees that an observable collection is um, providing an I notified property changed and an I collection changed. And WPF, and in this case, the data grid is able to see this and to handle it. So another interesting thing here is that a data grid, let's do it this way, data grid, and let's use resharper here, find usages advanced as a very hand, handsome thing, derive types in libraries. So that's not easy to accomplish without um, uh, resharper. And now, we have to see where this is coming. Just a second. Oh, uh, my fault. Um, I want to show something different. So we go to the object browser and I show you the data grid. So let's take a look there. And this is the data grid we are talking about. And now it's interesting that here uh, the inheritance hierarchy shows us that data grid at some point inherits from items control. And items control is um, the one which gives uh, us the item source property here, which we used for binding. So let's take a look what else is an items control. So now we can use resharper. We go to items control and say find usages advanced in libraries. And now we get here um, several uh, types which inherit directly or indirectly from items control. As you can see, 
Here, tree view, toolbar, tab control, tree view item, all those items inherit from items control in some way. List box, for instance, data grid, combo box. So this binding uh, thing uh, comes from items control, not from data grid itself. So when we know this, now uh, we know that um, items control is able to see that something is uh, an I notif or an I collection changed um, and uh, knows how to handle this. So now that we have this, we could do something magic. So this one, this first name, last name, and so on, is bound uh, against a property which is here called person model. So what if we could say that this thing should be bound to the one which is selected in this data grid, which is in at the current moment, moment pretty simple. Uh, we can do this um, by saying in the data grid selected item is a binding to uh, to person model. Um, so when we say mode two way, we say, hey, first of all, you should take the selected item to use it, um, to, to, to show it initially. And if your property changes in the grid, please tell it to the property person model so that this person model will be the one which you are, which you have selected in the grid. So I show you what this brings now. As you can see, if I switch here between the lines in the grid, it automatically switches here too. So I even can do the following. If I say Jim and I type here, um, it is live updated in the grid too because I'm doing this on exactly the same instance. First of all, this instance, which is bound against this field, is the same as this instance. And um, because it has uh, I notify property changed, it will propagate to this list too. So that is cool already. But I tell you, um, as long as we are using like 10 or 100 or even 1000 items here in this grid, everything is fine. Not everything, but it's, it's, it's fine. But if you do more complicated stuff, or let's say if you have rules here inside of this grid, uh, converters and stuff like that, this technique will get, will, uh, get slower and slower um, by the time. This is because currently we are misusing something here and um, we are binding our view directly to something uh, which is data which is pure data and no matter where it comes from, but it is pure data. So we have like a direct channel from our view representation to something which is not view ready. So Microsoft knew that this would be a problem and introduced uh, something completely new, which is uh, not so familiar to uh, the most um, of the guys outside. It is um, uh, inter an interface, which is called iCollectionView. So I want to uh, show you this uh, interface now. So let's go to um, the object browser again and let's say I collection view. So I collection view um, is something which has a lot more properties than just um, um, you know, uh, count or something like that. It, in, in fact, it hasn't count. It's, it's just an interface. And there are a lot of um, uh, classes which implement I collection view. For instance, list collection view. So if I just show you list collection view, it is even more powerful. So system windows data list collection view has a lot of uh, uh, things, methods and properties like count uh, which are implemented on them directly and it uh, inherits from collection view, which is uh, inheriting from I collection view or implementing I collection view too. So list collection view is um, the mostly used collection view thing. Uh, it's not collection view, it's list collection view. So let's just try and use it. Um, just lean back and uh, trust me. We just 
let our observable collection where it is because this is a container where we put our data in um, and regularly it comes from a service or directly from the database so we put it there that's okay now let's implement a list collection view and call it the person's view so now we have a property and um, we could say in uh, later on in the main window don't bind against this but against this and to enable this we just make this private this old one because uh, no one should bind directly against it so if we have this we could go and um, implement the following just paste it in at this position we just filled our persons and now we say the person's view should be the result of the static get default view using the persons which is our list here and uh, converting it to a list collection view because get default view would just return an i collection view we have to tell them how to interpret this now that we have this let's go to our main window and tell the grid no 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 not against persons it's not possible use the persons view and then let's get rid of the selected items i come to this point later on okay first of all let's try it it still works our synchronization doesn't work but it still works okay first of all this is cool um, now let's go and set the is synchronized with current item to true on the uh, data grid and let's set row virtualization enable row virtualization to true um, this one says hey uh, dear data grid um, you should um, just take care of those rows which are currently visible uh, visible ignore all the other stuff and this one says um, hey please um, uh, data grid um, be sure to synchronize your current selected item um, with the data source so that's not automatically happen when i just use start nothing will happen because this one is bound against um, this property and we didn't took care uh, at the moment to synchronize them i will do this now so let me just take a look where i did this here it is just implemented a new and i have to talk about this so what we are saying here first of all in the getter we say to retrieve the person model which is currently active please go to the person's view which is our new thing here uh, there go to this person's view and take the current item and the current item is something which is completely new because this um, uh, i collection view says hey i distinguish between the representation and the data the data has no current item the data is just an observable collection of something but the view side of the stuff says hey um, i'm aware that a lot of uh, controls um, have the ability to select one of those items and i just call it current item and if the control like the data grid just does with is synchronized with current item wants it i which means the list collection view will take care of it and i know what current item is so i just assume that current item should be a person model and i return it if it's not a person model which would be very strange in our scenario but if it isn't it's just returning now so just concentrate on the setter not uh, on the getter not on the setter so what happens now is that it's not working because we don't have a person's view at the moment so maybe we should do this one and hopefully uh, he's not happy with us just check this so what's now so it's not working currently and it is not working i had to do this i just redo uh, undo this because 
on the top here we say person model equals new person model. This currently just calls the setter here, which isn't working because we uh, don't have a person view at this moment and everything is a real mess. So I just remove this line and I say start again. So now we have no error, but still it is not uh, synchronizing. The first worked, you see here, he just took the first one, but no changes are, um, you know, synchronized here to this one. This is because um, we have to do something like that. So after we have a person view, we just say persons view. If your current item changed, you have to do something. You have to raise the property change on person model. We have to do this by hand. So current changed is provided us by the I collection view. Um, so that it says when someone just uh, changes the current item in the grid, which uh, will change the current item in the uh, collection view. So the collection view will pro, uh, promote the event that person model itself had changed, which is not uh, automatically happen. So let's go there and take a look. So now it's working. What we did now is just to show you that everything is working. What we did here is we told him a little bit more in the in the view model, which means in the logic and a lot a lot less in um, the data grid itself because we just use some properties and we don't use another binding to tell him hey don't forget to bind your current item or your selected item against uh, something in the in the model which uh, would be more expensive now um, all what happens is the data grid talk talking to um, the i collection view and this i collection view will handle all this stuff for us that's good okay Let's do uh, another thing uh, or another advantage, a big advantage of um, uh, collection view, which is sorting, for instance. Let's bring in this one. So what's happening here, it's just a sample, is that our person view, not the grid, the person view itself is able to sort things for us. So. If we just say, hey, just clear or maybe uh, already inserted um, sort options and now just add a new sort description, which says, hey, just please sort by first name ascendingly. So when we just run this the first time, we should see that this is sort uh, alphabetically, which is uh, numbers and then A and then C and then D. That's OK. But the not so okay thing is just let's switch this to that Z. Uh, it's working at the moment, but when we do this from this position, the F to an A, it's not working. So we changed it here. He changed it there, but he's not resorting the stuff. So all we have to do here now is um, to do a little bit magic. <laughs> um, so br let's bring in, first of all, the method, a new one here on the bottom. And let's say uh, this is an event handler for a property changed event. And let's go there and use this as follows. Persons, so after the sort, we just say, Whenever the person's changed, so remember this is the observable collection, not our I collection view. Whenever something inside of it has changed, please go there and for each new item, uh, just hook on to this, uh, the, the property change event to this, and each removed item, please hook off from the event. And then to make this, um, uh, Around we have to do the following, maybe a little bit at the top, or maybe here, whatever. For each item which is already in the person's list, because this is only valid if the list changes. But for each items, the 10 items which we added here, 
do the same stuff, add the property changed. So when we do this, now it should, first of all, when I do that here, it's working. It's moving that to the bottom. And when we do backwards, it's moving this, this thing up. The cool thing about this is it's not sorting using the grid functionality. It's sorting coming from our uh, view model. And it's happening on the view model, which is uh, far more faster and uh, regularly. And you, can, you have more control over the sort operation. So uh, the good thing is that the grid, um, uh, you know, recognizes the new sort because, hey, um, he gets a notify, notification mm, that the list has changed. So that's what we wanted to do or wanted to get. So now we have this. Uh, let's go there and uh, just um, change uh, the add person command now because it uh, makes no so much sense. Let's take a look at what I prepared. So now I have a new add persons command which says, hey, I have a new person. And now add this person to the persons and set the current person which is this property we get to the setter now we come to the setter set this current person to the one which is currently um, active so just by saying this we get tools at person oh man e old items what we got here e old items is null so just a second uh, i stop this yeah, it's typical uh, uh, null check, which is, and if we do this, we should do this too. Let's go here and e new items, not now. Okay, would be good if they provided this as an empty enumerable, but anyway. So now tools at person now we have a new person inserted and it's already selected which means it's active so to show it a little bit better here let's go there and say if we add this new person let's say first name is please oh, first name so we can better distinguish this one from the others so just reformat it a little bit pretty and now we just add one and now we see that first name is uh, selected here and it's, it's working if we do Z first name just for demonstration purposes. It's still working because the sort is instantly used. So now we can go here and do something. So um, the last thing I want to, oh, just because I, um, before I tell you about last thing and stuff like that, what you, what you see here is we are just using sorting on view model side. That's not everything which is possible. Um, the person view or the um, I uh, collection view has the ability to do um, search or filtering on view model size. It has the ability to do uh, grouping. Uh, on view model size uh, and what's very very interesting um, again if we take a look here at persons view it says we just generate this persons view by using the get default view okay but we could do the following person or other person view which is not present let's take a look oh man as equals to new uh, list collection view on uh, let's say persons take two uh, so what happens now to list I think so now I say list collection view other persons view so now it is happy. So what happens when I bind to 
other person's view. Let's go there. That is cool. So what happens here is that we have just one data source in the backend, but we have um, a lot of, in our case, two representations for the view on the same data source. Uh, what could it be useful for? For instance, I um, uh, oh, um, a, lot, um, a lot of projects of mine have the problem that the customer wants for some stupid reason, but he, but he wants it to show like all data um, which is available in the grid. No paging, nothing more. He wants to filter here directly and stuff like that. I don't know why, but they want it. They never use it, I guess, but they want it. Okay, so um, if they want to impress themselves with the bunch of data they have, you have the problem that the display only happens if the complete data is loaded. So you make a lot of intelligent stuff in the backend maybe um, to retrieve the data in chunks and stuff like that, but it's relatively heavy to just show a little bit of the data before the complete data is there. So now you, can, you could do this with this uh, approach. So you just say, um, if uh, the first data has arrived, hey, let's use this data, this small set of data, and just use like 10, 100, whatever, and bind it. And um, then you can switch the binding later on, not the binding, but um, you, can, you can tell the view that he's new now, and um, just give him all the data when it's arrived. So that is pretty cool, uh, I think. Uh, the, the main parts here, Uh, to understand are, uh, I show you, that the complete navigation, displaying, counting and stuff like that is happening on the view itself, on this iCollection view. Um, if you want to refresh something because you did something in the backend, then you simply call refresh on the iCollection view. Uh, refresh is only callable if is editing item and is adding new um, are not true. Which means if you have the cursor inside of one of the uh, text fields like this, it's not allowed now to refresh the view itself, which is logical uh, to me, because it would mean, you know, the, the view could change and your focus is lost and stuff like that. It's not logical to do this. Um, to this part I come later. So refreshing is possible. Yeah. Another cool thing is that you have on the view move methods. You, do, you not only have move current to, you, uh, you also have, let's go there, persons view, move. You have, for instance, move to first, move to last, move to next, move to previous, or move to an object, um, which is relatively hard to achieve um, if you have an observable collection only. You can do it, no problem, but you have to do it all the time by your own. Here you have everything ready to go. So as I told you, um, grouping or filtering is possible. So now with this, uh, with this in mind, I just go a little bit more in deep. With this in mind, with the multi-view stuff in mind, you can imagine what you could do on the view model side to control your view without doing something in the view, uh, especially. So I just leave this out now and bind again uh, to the person's view because I want to show you some more stuff. It, it was just a sample here, other person's view. You can have multiple views on the same data, which is cool and very, very cheap in terms of memory. Okay, so what I wanted you to show now is we have this, I show it again, we have this neat stuff here with, you know, null check. Oh, that's not good because first name must not be empty, blah, blah, blah. So would be good if it's shown here in the grid too. That is, uh, that has nothing to do with um, the eye collection view or stuff like that. It has only to do with the abilities of the data grid. So I want to show you now, I bring in a lot of stuff here and I, I discuss this with you. So I make the data grid a little bit more, you know, sophisticated. And now I just show you, first of all, how it's working, what I did here. So now the data grid comes up. And when I just uh, do this, you see here 
that the data grid uh, has this uh, round bo uh, this uh, border. And if I go to edit mode, now comes this line and it says first, first name must not be empty. And if I just change it, now last name has a problem too. And I go here and he says, uh, again, first name, <laughs> yeah, he's not so uh, good. First name must not be an I know. Please re-evaluate this. Oh, I didn't check this. Maybe I have a problem. Just let me take a look here. Last name is the current error. But anyway, <laughs> I have to do a little bit more uh, research here. What's going wrong? Why uh, this one is displayed, the, the wrong message. But anyway, what I wanted you to show is how you can achieve stuff like that. So let's go uh, a little bit more inside. I just uh, take a look. Data grid has the item source on our view, is synchronized, has enabled uh, row virtualization, and now I told him to not auto-generate the columns like it did before. Instead of, I just show you, I define the columns by my own, which is, in my opinion, every time a good idea, uh, because um, you have more control uh, um, over what is in the memory of the data grid, and you don't show stuff that it's not, uh, that's not useful to the to the user or even dangerous to show him. So what I tell him here is there will be a column named first name in the header and it's bound against something called first name in the model. And it says validates on errors true and update source trigger is property changed, which means every time when I just enter a, a char in the text box in the grid, it will update um, my model. So then I tell him that, uh, please, your editing element style will be the thing which is available as static resource here, error text input. So let's take a look at the resource. This is this resource, the style in this case, and it targets a text box. So how can that be? What is a text box? Because we are in a grid. To understand this, we have to do, um, we have, to to utilize this one so we can go here and here and just say uh, just a second let's go there and now here and as you see here in the so-called live visual tree which is um, what you can reach when you just hit this button and then hit the element which you want to inspect and he goes to the element and says you <coughs> and, and tells you hey there is a text box currently in this cell and when I leave it when I leave this cell um, then uh, um, it is not a text box anymore let's go here then it is a text block which is read only this is the way the data grid handles editing it's simply rep uh, replacing the text block with a text box when you uh, want to enter something in the grid. So if you take a look now here, it says, hey, the style inside of the grid uh, targets the text box. And because we are applying the style only if it's in edit mode, because we are overwriting the editing element style, which in fact means we are uh, de de defining the style of the text box because it's the editing element. Um, we can say, hey, uh, have a padding of minus two that's just positioning stuff. It's, it's not valid. And now get a trigger. And the trigger is if the property validation dot has error, which comes from idata error info, has the value true, um, just uh, give the text box a red background and a tooltip which is bound uh, to the first error. And that's my problem currently because the first error is first name and it's not clearing the first error. There's some kind of bug, but I can fix it. So in this way, we have to do nothing, um, you know, magic to just achieve that if this is empty, this has first name must not be empty. And if this is empty, I hope this will, okay, last name must not be empty, but this is wrong. No, now it's okay. I don't know what's happening. So, okay, that, that was uh, just the style of the text boxes if we are in edit mode. As you can see, only if I'm in edit mode, the background color is set. 
So now to this little guy. This little guy comes from this definition here, which I just exp nah, expand now. It comes because we are overwriting the template for row validation error. And row validation error is something that the data grid brings already. And we just say, hey, we want to do it our own way. So we just tell them, hey, just use a grid with some margin and a tooltip, which is bound to, again, the first error which you can find on the element. And then just make an ellipse and on the ellipse a text box with this text and position this, uh, position this stuff a little bit. And now we get this nice little, you know, circle with, um, with a white exclamation mark. That was happening here. The last thing is that I just added a context menu here, which uh, binds to nothing. As you can see, set some date command. That's because I didn't paste it in. Let's uh, do this last stuff because I wanted you to show this too. Uh, so where is it? Uh, set some date command. Um, I have, so I write this one by my own. Prop relay command set some date command the name is program here because as you can see when i just define it let's do it here it's just a, oh i see a relay command of person model huh. i show you what this means so and i just say uh, you get a person a model and takes this person model and set the birthday to the date now minus 20, 20 years. So in the binding here of this, you see that we say, hey, the command is bound to the set some date command. And here's the trick, the command parameter, the thing which is passed to the command. Uh, please uh, use the current person model, which is automatically the one which is selected uh, corresponding to the selected uh, row in the grid because we have this property uh, is synchronized with current item and we did some stuff as you've seen in the in the view model and now we can pass it in but we could pass any other person model too if we wanted to so what hap what what's happening here is simply i just wanted to show this too right click it and set a date and as you can see now, he uh, synchronizes this all the way, massa detail like, and uh, now he's validating that this is okay. And if we say 2001, um, this is not okay here, but what we don't have here at this time um, that he recognizes that, hey, the has errors has changed. That is because we have to do a little bit more stuff. I won't cover it here, but I said, <clears throat> here at this position, please ignore um, all property changes on the items if the property which has changed is has errors or is okay. So now, uh, no, I can't provoke it. Now, this is because those properties are coming very, very often and I'm ending in an endless loop if I just hook on each property change. Um, if I just leave this out, I can show you what happens. It's not good. Uh, so now the program won't come up. And I show you what happens in the, what is it called? Uh, live debugging. Yeah, the program comes now. You know, diagnostic, diagnostic tool was, was uh, this. And as you can see here, now he's just going mad on memory. Uh, just let me hook this here. And that is because if I just hit a breakpoint here, you see that he's coming all over again with guy, come on. I just pin you with you. I pin you. He's coming here because all the time the property has errors changes. And he's not getting ready because he always refreshes the view all the time. And he's collecting memory like mad. So um, that is because when I bind um, against the has errors, it will change even uh, if it's not changing 
true or false it's just uh, invoking the hey this property may has changed and i have to fix this uh, right now and you will come into similar issues uh, in your projects and i will just provide uh, some solutions in the source code as i uh, do all the time to do this but the point here and uh, all this stuff i just show it again was to make clear that you please uh, not bind against um, uh, a list or an observable collection or something like this di directly but uh, you should use um, this i uh, collection view um, another hint is there are some freaky explanations and some third component um, uh, library documentations i know it for instance from infogistics um, which are very old this command um, and there is something which says hey you should use you know what you should use this guy binding list of person model and you you should bind against this because you know what it's called binding list guess why uh, it's because you should bind against it so binding list um, i I just encourage you not to use it because first of all it's um, uh, a little bit old binding list um, was available on windows forms too and the, that's not a problem the problem here is that binding list has some issues with large data sets for instance um, if you have a binding list and um, you change um, value of an item of a binding list and this item is the i notify property changed which is our person model for instance then the binding list will just iterate through the complete list all items because it tries to recalculate the index um, offset for the for all the items because it might have changed so this ends up in huge huge performance issue issues you um, see this if you have binding list scenarios then you see if you scroll uh, in, inside of an item or you hit enter um, in a direct editable grid you just wait um, and uh, you, the more items you get the more you wait so it's not scaling very well and it's very very memory con consuming so don't use binding list um, regardless what is uh, written there in the documentation use i collection view because it's simply made for mvvm so um, that was all for today the the source code is uh, available as ever i link it in the in the description and i hope it was informative to you and uh, see you